Hello everybody, let's go on directly with the next screencast and I uh, want to show you now how I made my uh, background mesh and how I meshed Susan for the competition. Um, therefore we directly start um, with Blender and we load our saved file which was like this one, it was a bit too fast, so uh, it was a blended file from uh, another try, so <laughs> um, yeah. So now we can make our background mesh uh, in Blender, so you have different options. Of course you can extract this, getting the bounding box via check mesh and then make your block mesh dictionary. Or you have some scripts which makes um, the background mesh for you. Another possibility would be using Blender. Uh, there is an add-on called Swift Block. I wanted to demonstrate how to use this here. Unfortunately, uh, I didn't get the plugin or the add-on uh, work in this uh, version 2.76. Um, I don't know if it's still in development. If the uh, the guy is um, going on in this and keeping it up to date. Um, I was asking, so maybe I will make another screencast about uh, how to use the Swift blocks to create block mesh dicts. Um, yeah. Um, however, I want to show you how you can use a Blender here for creating um, the background mesh. Actually only the, let's say, the outer box and then we will do the rest in Salome. So for that, um, a very simple, we add, so this um, mesh here, we can use uh, here the cube, or you can shift A for add and then we'll have the same menu here. So we add a cube, however, again, the cube should be in the center position in order to to have everything centered. And now the only thing what we do is we scale it. So you see now if I scale it with S, so here we have the, the keys that I'm typing. Um, if I scale it here in this object mode, uh, we will scale both objects. That's the reason why we go into the um, edit mode. You can also change here uh, to Wi-Fi, wi <laughs> I will wireframe and not Wi-Fi, and to see the object behind. And then you can scale your box as a background mesh. So I want to scale it in X direction. Uh, let's see. Um, scale it in X direction by a factor of. 2.5, 2.5, then I will scale it in Y direction via, hmm, let's say 5, and scale it in Z direction, how much we make, uh, 2, yeah, let's make 2. And in addition, I want to shift this uh, background mesh. Um, here we have the inlet on the left hand side. I want to shift it towards uh, Susan's face because you know that um, after the flow is passing by, so this obstacle here, which will be, uh, which the flow will go around, will make some vertices if we have some lamina flow, like the Von Karman Street, some vortex shedding. If you have higher Reynolds number, then it can occur that we form eddies, uh, turbulent eddies. Mm, uh, however, I am trying to, to make um, a lamina flow. And that's the reason why at the, behind Susan's head, we, I'm interested um, about the things, what happened uh, behind Susan's head more. So we can go to 2.5, so we moved it to 2.5 meters. 
and this would be our background mesh with Susan's head inside. So I guess I, because I don't tried it, so if you make now, um, if you go just back to this solid and if you subdivide it, you see how we could make our, our mesh here. So this would be a nice background mesh. However, um, the problem is that I don't can, uh, I don't have access to the shift swift block add-on, and this swift block add-on, I guess it can export this data we generated here um, to create a block mesh dictionary. However, based on the fact that we don't have it, I will have to use Salome. But um, it's very simple, of course. So we start Salome. And what we are doing is simply getting one, two, these two corner points and building our block in Salome. And then we can mesh it in Salome. And after that, yeah, we can make the patches for our background mesh, our base mesh, and export it as UNV file. So there are two possibilities I want to show. One would be exporting this STL file as, let's say, background STL. So you could in load this file. So where we are here, monkey transient cut. So this file would be loaded now. And based on this, we could make a new block with two points, would be this point and this point, and done. The other option would be to make two coordinates, which would be actually this point and this point, and do the same thing. And the coordinates could be accessed by uh, going here into the edit mode, and select one point, and here we have the coordinates. Um, keep in mind you should have here global, and the same here. And with these two points you can also create these uh, box in Salome and we will make it a background mesh. What we need is to define some patches, some inlet, side patches, select all, remove it, like that, y and some outlet. We see everything simple then we go to the meshing module and we will mesh the background object using uh, automatic hexa drillization and the number of segments we will skip because we will use a local length number of 0 0.2 meters and then we will get a background mesh with 25,000 volumes. It looks like this. Then we will create our patches. And so here we have the outlet, the inlet, and the side patches. So everything looks very nice. The last step is to export this file to a U, as a UNV file, which we can then convert to an open foam mesh. Okay, that's done. This is done. Here we will we will save it. This is done too. Um, and now we uh, rearrange monkey. And we will just um, transform our UNV file using ideas UNV to foam. 
and the already exported background mesh. Then we open Power View to check everything again. So here is our background mesh. And we will load our Suzanne and check if everything is fine. This key is also, uh, not relevant anymore if you are not working with another software than Blender. So here we make surface. And oh yeah, let's make surface here, but we are calling presentation. Where is it? So this is it, um, background mesh, inside is our Susan, well positioned. The dimensions are in meters, so we have 5 meters here, 10 meters long, and Susan's uh, head in X range here is 2.6 meters. But after meshing, uh, we will scale it down by a factor of 10. So far, so good. Uh, let's just start uh, the meshing procedure. So what I'm doing here is actually nothing than starting this run script, which does everything what I want to do. So it will transform the background mesh, will decompose the background mesh in order that I can use uh, the meshing procedure using four cores in parallel. Then I reconstruct the mesh, I scale the mesh, and then the solver will start, but I think it will fail. However, I'm just interested to, to mesh it and then we can check out what is our result. What I set up in, uh, in the Snappy Hex Mesh Dictionary is very simple. Um, two steps are done, so castellated, so refining, yeah, splitting this hexaedron. Um, blocks into sub blocks and then we snap it. We have here our Susan STL, which is uh, Susan with with the yeah with these two patches we extracted and we named this ears. And the patch name in the simulation is called then named monkey. Of course, this is arbitrary. And here monkey back. So here. I think if you read this, you should know what's going on. Um, I used N cells between levels 7. I will show you what that means uh, after we have the mesh. And I was just using a surface refinement, as you can see here. There are no features, so I don't snap to feed, or I don't treat features as in an explicit way, explicit way, or I don't even refine. Um, features here. Uh, explicitly, I use this implicit method here with this feature angle. I will talk about this, what it, this means um, in a few seconds. So, going on, refine the features are also not used. Um, I'm sorry uh, that my no, my today it's my dishwasher which makes some noise. Uh, I will, will end directly. So and then location point it's clear, and the snapping controls are some more or less um, default settings. The only thing that I want to mention here I use this implicit feature snap method, um, which so very good in that case and uh, layer condition or controls are not used because um, firstly there I don't create any patch which should have or should be layered and of course at the beginning I said that the layers are not generated and that's that's it. So let's check out if I have my file still here um, or if I have it somewhere else. 
So you see I made a few tries already. So let's open it. So this is the monkey head I already published. Um, and I want to show you what what is it about with this um, refinement surfaces. Okay, so what we define here is that the, the patch the patch here or this the surface which is named monkey um, this this name corresponds to this name, right? That this um, this surface named monkey will be refined minimum by a three. It means if you have here our big background mesh, we have some intersection with this background mesh, it will be refined once, refined twice, and refined a third time. Everywhere around this surface. So after the meshing is completed, um, I can show it to you in a, a more appropriate way. And after that, the second number comes into account. Um, and this is based on this result feature angle. Right now, I don't know how it is actually calculated, but Angus, they made an excellent PDF once a while ago. It's almost two or three years old. Uh, where it is explained what this uh, feature angle does. Actually, I'm not sure if I explained it correctly. It checks out the two faces, neighboring faces, or maybe cells. I, have, I, I cannot remember right now. And it checks out or three, three cells and checks out the angle between the centers. And if the angle is greater than this one you specify here, then um, snappy hex mesh refines these cells with number four. If the check does not hold again, it will refine it to a level five. The outcome is that these nice features here are refined more accurately than the other uh, the other geometry or the rest of the a surface as you can here really see. So these green guys are level 3, these yellow guys are level 4 and the red guys are level 5. And this is how you can more or less control uh, or have a bit more control about um, your geometry. I prefer always to use like 5.5 five, but in that particular case I like the outcome uh, with these settings here because I don't want to refine, uh, for example, this the top hat here um, more than necessarily. Of course, it will influence the drag coefficient, uh, but it is just um, a fun project, I'm not a real scientific project that you have to take care about. Oh, how is the mesh resolution? and yeah, that's the reason why I keep the amount of cells as low as possible because also my local mesh in here at home uh, is not uh, a cluster with uh, 40 cores. So I have to reduce the mesh size. However, I have, I think it comes somehow about around about 1.5 millions, but we will see. Okay, so right now there is nothing uh, a left, which I can mention, uh, the scripts here, uh, they come from the normal tutorials that I share with all of you. We can just check out what, what our meshing stuff is doing. Oh, it's already done. Nice. I see it even on my, my CPU that everything is finished. So then we will check out our mesh. So our mesh looks like this. So you can see here the influence of our meshing procedure. 
Tak. Be silent, dish washer, be silent. Can happen that it will make some noise now, but um, we don't care. Okay, so let's slice this guy. So, what we have here is our nice meshed Susan. And here I can really um, explain this and cells in between layers. Uh, I already forgot this. I will. This one, this setting, this number seven, what does this number seven mean? It tells you that from level zero to level one to level two to level three we have always seven cells in between so this does not hold always but more or less it's uh, valid so from level zero then we have level one to level two we will have now seven cells one two three four five six okay six here we would have seven here we would have seven here we would have eight so it's based on the fact that this geometry is not like um, aligned with uh, our background mesh so it's more or less seven so it can be five to eight and then we go on from level one to two then if we go from two to three we have one two three four five six seven and then we go on and we have One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if you go to level five, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So more or less seven. You see? Okay. And that's it. To have a nice look to our monkey ad. Um, I will show you this one. Come on, Susan. Uh, internal mesh is not needed. To have a, a look at our Susan's head, how it was meshed. So this is how it looks like. For me, a very well meshed uh, Susan. Uh, I can directly see here our patch. And you can see it here. What, what I mean is, if we take this VTK, now you see that these are these patches, this is the, the guys we cut off and made an own STL file. And for what purpose we made this, I will give you in a few seconds, just um, a few words about uh, our geometry. Of course, you can see here some small guys, which are yeah not I would say <laughs> not nice, but um, actually it's a very complex geometry to mesh. Of course, there are way more complex geometries, with, um, especially if you have some small holes with some big um, uh, with big dimensions, and you have some small dimensions inside. But all in all, it's fine. Even here, you see the closed eyes. Yeah? which are nicely meshed. Uh, for me, it's a very good mesh. It took me just a few few minutes to produce it. Um, let's say 10 minutes just um, of thinking which parameters we will choose. So, and these patches, um, these monkey back patches here, these two red guys, this one, um, um, I am using for some special thing that I want to make. So the, the thing I want to make is I want to have at these patches um, some passive scalar which has value 1. So therefore I made, I solved the passive scalar equation which are built with some function objects. So here you see how I build it. However, the important thing here is that we have to have a diffusion coefficient. 
it has to be defined. If you set zero, nothing will happen. Uh, the reason is very simple, and I will explain it to you now. After um, we were checking out the boundary conditions, so just keep in mind this is just a passive scalar, delta t, so the time derivative, the convection uh, term, and the Laplace term, no sources um, applied here. And the the boundary conditions for this file looks as follows. So in the in at the inlet we define a fixed value of zero, and at these patches named monkey back we define a value of one. So that means that if you go back again to this um, geometry and we will check out let's. Let's make it like this, and then we make a block, 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 extract block. So then we will make this one, and this guy we will we will cut through here while we will crinkle and this one, and then we will move it to the ear. Looks very nice. So. Okay, so now I will explain what happened here. Let's extract, we will. Okay, so actually, this red. Um, This red areas here will have the value of one, right? So the problem now is that we set the velocity at all this um, at all Susan's head um, to a non-slip boundary condition, which means the flow is zero here. So you can imagine if there is no flow, how should be this value one transported into the domain? It only can occur if there would be a flux through these phases which transport uh, this scalar which has the value 1 into the domain. Yeah. So if we, we check out this, this patch here, this patch phase which will put something into this cell, it's only possible if from the patch into this cell will be some flow which cannot be because we say the patch velocity is zero, so there's no flux. So the only possibility that there is some information transport from the patch to the internal cell value, um, or into the yeah internal cell, is by diffusion. That means if you don't set any diffusion, there will be there will be you no know, transport because we set the fluxes through these patches is R0 and that's the reason why by the convective term in our transport equation this scalar cannot be transported into the domain if we say in addition the um, diffusion coefficient is zero so the Laplace equation for the diff which handles the diffusion is zero too, so everything is zero and there is no information transport. That's the reason why you have to add some um, diffusion coefficient that this value gets transported inside. So um, just a remark, so it's always very good to understand the equations, so you see you can explain uh, what happened there and if you would set up this guy as I did and you will forget in this control dig to say oh there is a diffusion coefficient for my um, scalar if you set it to zero and you wonder um, why there is no information exchange so you can explain it here um, I don't know right now uh, if, if the guy will run I think it will not run Patch entry side is not found because I named it sides. Okay, so I'm sorry for that. So in the background mesh generation, you should name it sides, but I will change it uh, after 
after the screencast and will publish it after 21st of November as my new tutorial. So, okay, so let's see um, if it's now running. And if I can, yeah, of course, um, give you some more. I can prove what I was stating here. So now we have the diffusion coefficient to be zero. There's no information transport. That would mean if we solve this equation, uh, the iteration, so or let's say the linear solver should have zero iterations always. If it, this is the case, then it is the proof that I'm right. And then we will, if this is correct, and if we see this here, then we will change the diffusion coefficient to a higher value in order to see if there is some difference. Okay, right now I don't know the, how I set up this case. Check it out. Let's just make one, one. Let's speed it up a bit. Tuck, 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 tuck. So three hundred thirty thousand times three four. So it's like uh, 1.2 million cells, which is, in my opinion, quite a lot for this simple geometry or simple test case. And you see here, after the first iteration, we solve the transport equation, and the linear solver tells us the initial residual is zero, the final residual is zero, and number of iterations is zero. Why? Because there's no information transport. And if, there, if the field is zero everywhere and it will be kept zero, there's no, no need for solving any linear system of equations. So if we change now this diffusion coefficient, then we should get some um, output that we are solving this linear system of equations. Which would be then the proof or I or the proof of my statements. And what is so you even can see it was taking a bit longer. So here the normal one, initial receiver one, and receiver minus nine, the number of iterations. So uh, you can see uh, even with the output of a form, you can check out if something is like working correctly or not. So okay, this was everything. Uh, what I wanted to mention, um, the turbulence properties, I use laminar, less, no runs, no LAS, so low Reynolds number, um, my boundary conditions for P, the standard one, I was thinking about having a, a pressure based flow, but um, yeah, just let, just let's assume that this is Nothing special, inlet velocity of uh, two centimeters per a second. Um, um, I do not allow to have reverse flow at the outlet. I have no idea how the velocity or the, the flow field will establish if I get some vortexes which can uh, make some reverse flow at the inlet. Of course, there could be then some more appropriate boundary conditions, but this is the case how I set it up for my simulation. And what I have in addition, I have this include of this residual function, which will write me in this post processing residual zero uh, file called residual. And then I have the possibility to. To foam monitor this guy and yeah, have some receivable control. It's like this Python plot watcher from the software foam. 
um, stuff from Bernhard Scheider. Um, however, I'm getting used to this one now. Actually, it does not matter which one you are using. The only part that is important is that you are happy with your simulation and that you are doing a good job there. I hope you get something new. This was the screencast series number seven about how I set up the Susan case for the community competition um, 2017 for Christmas. And if there is time, I will extend this screencast for one more in order to show you how you can visualize your results and using Blender. So coupling Blender and OpenFoam. I think a lot of people are interested in that uh, because there are actually not too much information available. If you are searching for Blender and OpenFoam, I know that there is uh, one YouTube screencast actually um, I think you have to go to oh, this what is this blender open from wiki this entry ah, okay this is with this swift block and swift snap um, which are generating background meshes this is my simulation. This is a simulation from one guy using my scripts. So actually, um, I know there is something. You... Blender, Blender, open phone. So if you follow this, this screencast here, scientific visualization in Blender, from which was done by Mark Pittman. I was following this one once. Uh, however, it was not working in my case because it's already six years old. Blender was uh, moving forward and the comments and the um, setup, how you export and this stuff uh, is a bit different now. However, if you're interested, you can directly go to my website and download the Blender, um, the Blender Open Foam coupling scripts. Um, the only thing that you have to take uh, in or take care is that I don't explain anything here, as I do it in general in my tutorials. <laughs> if you know that. I just give you a run script and you have to do your homework yourself. Blender coupling is a bit more complex uh, because you have to be familiar with Blender, which I am not actually. Always when I start doing this Blender rendering, I have to start from scratch. That was the reason why I put this uh, last Blender rendering um, script onto my web page that I can start always here. So there are two things you have to take care about um, just like uh, first information if you have a transient sim simulation you need to have a, a Paraview script, a Python script which will export all time steps uh, into a X3D file and then you need a Blender rendering script which will use each of these files, apply all your filters and render your picture. And save this picture as PNG and then you can um, put all pictures together to make a movie. This is the short introduction about that. Um, however, this generation of these Blender scripts is not very difficult, but you have to know what you are doing and where you have to do it. This is a, a big problem most people have when they start with Blender because Blender is a very big software toolbox, but as OpenFoam, a very, very nice one. And I hope in the future I have a bit more time to, to go into the code of Blender and use it for renderings or even uh, making re STL repairing, which is, I think, Blender, one of the best I have right now. And yeah, we will see what's going on 
in my YouTube channel in the next few months and years. So, I hope you get uh, some inspiration, some new things, and if you like what I'm doing, share it, please like it, um, and follow me. And if you want to have exclusive news, you're always welcome to um, register freely on my webpage here, register freely. Um, then you get some emails, not regularly, it depends how much work I'm doing for the community and I will update you here directly. Uh, that you have all the information because uh, if you follow me on Twitter or on LinkedIn it can be a bit on delay or sometimes you can get uh, uh, how should I say if you get the information maybe you, you don't have time to read that but here you get it exclusively if you don't want to get the emails anymore just write me an email or I will implement it to my webpage that you can delete your profile. So everything is for free and I don't store your, your data for selling it to other people or companies. So you don't have to be worried about that. So it's up to you. And in addition, this wiki, openphone.com, always recommended phone which is growing and growing and I think yeah, also Joseph will put the, the Christmas competition here I have no idea then YouTube Joseph Joseph's YouTube channel here also always interesting so he's going on in his projects However, he has more guys following him than I have, so he is like my my enemy on YouTube. <laughs> and yeah, of course, the wiki, the open foam, foam wiki net page is also recommended. And please, if you have anything you are sharing on cfdonline.com, I highly recommend you to make up or put your stuff also into this wiki here because things get lost in our open form forum. Okay, so now enough that. Um, have fun. Enjoy Suzanne and the case. If you are interested in it, you will find it at the end of 21st after publishing all my videos of course here open form tutorials and then I will make maybe direct link here Susan <clears throat> I thank you for watching and yeah there's nothing else to say cheers bye bye guys and Let's meet someone somewhere for some drinks. <laughs>